September 2009, the President of the Republic of Indonesia stunned the international community by announcing an emissions reduction target of 26% by 2020. This single act showed the world that Indonesia not only understood the implications of climate change, but wanted to play a major role in demonstrating how to harness the opportunity and mitigate past mistakes. Indonesia, like most countries trying to lead the way, has a number of internal barriers to overcome if it is to achieve its objectives. It is now globally recognized that the transition to a low carbon economy is inevitable. So delay means losing first mover advantage. By not developing technology today means having to buy it from somewhere else tomorrow. As time goes by, the damage caused by climate change will increase, making it more costly for Indonesia to make changes. Many of those in Indonesia who have power and influence in local government and business are still unclear of the science and economic impact that climate change will have in their country. There is a need for mass education and knowledge sharing. It is hard to change working relationships within national and regional government, but the science and economics of climate change adaptation and mitigation require a higher level of collaboration between departments. Applying to national or local government for support and the decision-making process that follows can be overcomplicated, inconsistent and take far too much time. A major barrier to Indonesia's success is in its decision-making processes. Whilst most Indonesian citizens see every day the impact of climate change, its leaders, academics and business people have yet to recognise the full range of opportunities that exist to make the country a true leader in the developing world. Creating a low-carbon and sustainable business community means that all stakeholders will increase profits and Indonesia will grow quicker than most competitors. The cost of that delay is certainly enormous to business because uh, take for example the traffic of Jakarta, you know. The, this problem could have been anticipated, you know, years ago, long time ago. And I'm sure that the government realized that and I'm sure that they know what really needs to be done. But uh, I think we seem to have problem with delivering its implementation. And that has caused, of course, inefficiencies, uh, cost in business, productivity, of people and time and business, and not to mention, of course, the environmental damage. So the cost of delay is certainly could be very, very damaging. The collaboration between business and government is basically one of the driving forces for change and, uh, and solution findings in Indonesia. It is not the only one, but it's a very important one, and I think uh, in order to, uh, to, to bring Indonesia to the next level of development, that collaboration and also the trust level on both sides uh, needs to be increased and improved. It's never before in our history that the price of a chili per kilogram is much, much more expensive than the price of beef per kilogram. It never happened before. And there's a saying in the country, if we can keep the price of chili, rice, and cooking oil affordable, people will be calm. If not, there could be a lot of unrest. Now the government has to look at it and why the food price uh, was high is because of the climate change. We have extreme drought, a lot of forest fire, we have extreme very wet seasons which uh, cause failure of uh, harvesting. And to stop that, I think the economy has to go to a green practices and it needs incentive policy from government. Incentive for green economy, low carbon businesses, uh, clean investment, clean technology, uh, and clean products. Um, the, the incentive should be given for the investors, for the traders, and for, for the producers, and also for governor and bupati. So the governance, the development planning of a province of Kabupaten is looking towards not only of high growth of economy, but sustainability and how well the resources, natural resources, environmental aspect is being kept because that will ensure the long-term growth, stable growth of the economy. 
and uh, it has to be done now, not next week, not two years ago, because it's been discussed for the last 12 months or even more, and people are waiting for Indonesia uh, to make the decisions now. Indonesian society is a mosaic society. We have uh, old generations, we have uh, generations uh, baby boom, we have uh, age generations, and now we are living in the IT and connecting generations. And what kind of uh, decision should be uh, prepared for each uh, generation? That's, uh, I think, the biggest challenge for government. Indonesia is one of the only countries in the world that's actually legislated corporate social responsibility. And I think a lot of corporates get confused as to what sustainability is and what corporate CSR is. And so they haven't stood back and said, oh, okay, this has to be sustainable, this has to be low carbon. They haven't really thought that one through yet. If we delay further on this, then you know that the skill sets we will not be able to increase it and make it competitive and comparable to even countries within Indonesia. So what we've been doing is actually trying to send potential leaders overseas, get them educated, get them to understand what are the new ways of working, come back to Indonesia, go back into the community and cascade down what they had learned overseas and then implement it. And that's the only way for us to catch up to, to the setbacks that's that's been happening here in Indonesia. If you compare Indonesia with the rest of the world, Indonesia today is classified as the third largest CO2 emitter. And currently we have only about 36 projects that have gone through the registration process, compared to the likes of China and India that have already had a thousand. I think if you look at that cost, I think that that is great. There's about 27 or 28, possibly 30 gigawatts of, of electricity potential just in geothermal. Uh, that's about, that's more than half of the geothermal potential of the globe, and that's just in Indonesia. It's an enormous competitive advantage that Indonesia should be taking advantage of. What would make a huge difference for the geothermal industry is better coordination amongst different levels of government and, and different parts of the bureaucracy. There's no shortage of people willing to invest money in geothermal electricity, of credible, um, uh, very, very good developers uh, who are prepared to be in the industry for the long term. The, the prob and financiers, as we the industry has shown that it can finance projects once they're approved. The problem is in getting to the approval and the licensing stage, and that needs coordinated action from government, and that does not exist at the moment. There's virtually no alternative energy that's not possible to deliver in Indonesia. The frustration, I think, for everybody is that um, at the moment it's punching way below its weight, and there is a huge opportunity if government connects up with industry um, and with uh, technology providers, it can all be realised and can be realised quickly and can solve all the problems we've got environmentally as well as commercially. It's there, but now action needs to be taken. If we were in China, the government and the businesses get it because I truly believe that China understands the economic drive to going green and they've bought into the whole idea of clean tech. But here in Indonesia, that's not quite the case yet. The cost of delay uh, becomes uh, an important issue since uh, the global and the society uh, moving faster and faster. And the regulatory or the um, the body that should uh, decide it, uh, what's the best uh, public policy should uh, adopt it, has to uh, compete by the speed of the society. So that's, that's the main problem. And uh, the complexity that, creates by, that created by uh, society and private, and society and consumer, society and uh, distributor, 
um, they create data, they create information. And more uh, dynamic uh, the activity, more it means that more data and information will be available in the market. And this should be uh, analysis. That this, this will be analyzed. That will be uh, considered by policy maker. Uh, the cause of delay and the delay itself happens when the regulatory or policy maker they are not ready to uh, analyze to uh, decide which uh, the best solution should be uh, adopted. The environmental degradation is just indescribable, right? So it, it has been very difficult to, to prove. But um, I think now there's more awareness that this cannot continue. And uh, we're getting a lot more people on board on this. Um, and BNI is pretty much prepared because we have been uh, putting our frameworks in place for the, oh, you know, more than three years ago and getting uh, our first stakeholder, which is the employees, already on board on this one. There are three major challenges. The first is lack of information and awareness amongst the stakeholders about the benefits. The second is there is some regulatory overlap and conflicts in certain sectors. And third and finally, there's the challenge of getting things done in Indonesia and stakeholders coming together for a common objective. What is the impact if we don't do this change? I think it's very clear. We live in this global world. I think we can see what other countries have done as well. And as Indonesia, definitely, um, we don't want to be left behind. You know, and the only way we can do this is for us to move fast because, of course, you know, all these implications by not uh, applying the right technology, by not being, um, being uh, moving with the right direction where the whole global world is moving on the environment side, definitely Indonesia will miss a lot of opportunities. And uh, this is that's something we don't want to do. by the partnering mechanism between uh, state, between government and business community, I think a lot of things can be uh, uh, solved. Uh, I mean, the cost of delay can, could be reduced uh, significantly. The urgency is now because we'll be left behind. And the thing is, Indonesia does have potential. We do have potential leaders out there who can take this country forward. We, we have certain examples in our traditional societies, if you like, whereby they understand how to manage uh, traditional resource management that is sustainable. So basically it's that concept that has been proven. Now how do we translate that into the business sector? There's enough proof and discussion and service and to say that it is going to, it works and we just need to have faith and believe in it. The cost of delay is high, but the changes that need to be made are clear. In the next three years, Indonesia has the possibility of leading the world. The question is, are we going to make this story of delay and confusion fact or fiction?